take average of the distances for this subject, then all these four rows will turn into, can anyone guess what will happen? Into one row, yes. It will be just one row for each subject. So when we average the distance per each subject, we're going to have one, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate your answers. Um, okay, so now we, we transform our data into having one row per each subject, right? And then each of this subject is independent and then fixed effects model might work well, right? That's the assumption for using the fixed effects models. Now we have independent observations and we can use our uh, fixed effect model. And let's see what happens when we use average distance, when we use this transformed data where distance is averaged per subject and when we have, yes, the sample size will decrease and now we have one row per each subject and each of these in observations for each subject are independent. So now we are satisfying the independence assumption of the fixed effect model and we can run fixed effects model on this transformed data. And actually this turns out to be pretty good for the sex variable because sex variable is between subject. If we wanted to work with age variable, then we couldn't reach this because age is within the subject. How, how can you average then the, uh, the age, uh, what happens with the age covariate because age is within subject. So this is true only for a covariate where, uh, um, for a covariate which plays a role of fixed effect uh, on a between subject level. If we had covariate on within subject level, like age, then we couldn't do this averaging for the distance, uh, over the distances for each subject, okay? So it turns out that this model works pretty well if you average. Of course, with averaging, you lose data. You don't wanna do this in, in, in practice. You lose data when you do this averaging, uh, but it's still better model than using the previous model where where we didn't average over the distance and we just used repeated measurement structure where it was all treated as independent, right? Like we did here. Um, oh, no, this was uh, the, the previous model. Yeah, it was here. Okay, so what happens between these models now? Uh, if we take a look into the errors, now you can see that the model that is run on the average distance has bigger errors than the model that is run on um, non-average distance. This is the model that treats the data very wrong because it treats the data as they were independent, but they are not actually independent. They, they have uh, inter-subject uh, correlation, right? Within subject correlation. So here the sample size is is artificially inflated because this model does not capture the structure of the data and hence um, therefore uh, standard errors are small but here we have correct standard errors and you can see that that p-value also is um, looks much uh, accurate more accurate now here it was uh, artificially small because these standard errors are also small because we artificially inflated the sample size, okay? So this is a good way to go, but still not the best uh, because you lose data with that averaging and you can do the averaging only if you have covariates that are on a uh, between subject level. You wouldn't do the, you couldn't do this with age with uh, uh, within subject covariate, right? <laughs>